Uh, good morning and welcome to The Big Issue on New Day on TV3. My name is Beatrice Edu and yesterday Ghana witnessed its parliament making history. The Speaker of the House pronounced the minority in parliament as the majority because the Speaker looked at the petition that was put before it by the former minority leader Harun Idrisu that four seats should be declared vacant because those individuals <coughs> occupying the seat had given their intention to go independent going into this year's general election. And there have been a lot of agreements and disagreements on this, and we'll be talking about this today. I have, my name is Beatrice Edu, I have on the panel with me uh, Ishak Ibrahim, his lecturer, UPSC, and member of the MPP's communications team. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, and good morning to your listeners. I also have on my extreme right, Kwame Jantwa, his private legal practitioner, member of the Convention People's Party. Good morning to you, lawyer. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Beatrice. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. I have with me as well Abraham Amari Amaliba. He's Director of Conflict Resolution with the opposition, now the majority in Parliament, NDC. Good morning to you, sir, as well. Thank you for joining us. A day after history was made in Parliament, it can only be a good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, I have with me as well Andrew Apia Danko, private legal practitioner, communications team member, movement for change with the Alan Kwejo chairman team team. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, it's good mm, to see you. Yeah, same here. Mm. Yeah, I, hope, I hope you are, you are, you are doing well. Sir. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. So I was just telling you of what happened yesterday, but I want you to watch some of the specific things that were said when the speaker declared the NDC majority, and then we'll come back to the panel and get the conversation rolling. Honourable members, it is important to point out that the speaker is called upon by the standing orders of parliament, particularly order 18, to inform the house of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1B to E, G and H of article 97 of the constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the house that by the notification of the polls, the following members of parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. And you watch there, Alban Bagwin, he's the Speaker of Parliament, uh, making that statement. The individuals involved cannot pretend uh, to be representing another interest when indeed they have declared their real interest. But I want to, before we come to our panel, I want to tell you the implications of what just happened in Parliament yesterday. What it means is that the NDC has now become the majority in Parliament, in the eighth Parliament, with the NDC having now 100 136 members whilst the MPP has 135. Again, the second deputy speaker's position, that's in Andrew Esiama's position, now becomes vacant. 
Also, certain positions will have to change. MPP will have to switch positions uh, with the NDC. And, of course, leadership of committees and compositions will have to change as well. Let me come to my panel here. And I want to start with you, Ibrahim Amaliba. You said that a day after this was declared, 51 days to the country's uh, general election, this morning could not have been better than good. Let me get your thoughts, really, your preliminary comments of what transpired within the last one week. Well, let me say good morning to your viewers. The ruling as delivered by Mr. Speaker yesterday was the only ruling that could have been delivered. Any other ruling would have amounted to devilish ruling. Why am I saying this? That provision, Article 97.1, with its babies, A to G, is meant to protect the institution of parliament, particularly so that the democracy we are practicing will not fall into a one-party state. That provision. The ruling yesterday was a victory to our constitution, constitutional democracy, that's constitutionalism. It was a victory for parliament. It was a victory for the rule of law. And it was a victory for the majority. And I'm talking about the Atufosi majority. You look at that provision. If you went to parliament, on a certain vehicle and along the line whilst in parliament you you jettison that vehicle that provision says that that your seat must be declared vacant because you went to parliament on a certain platform the people voted for you because of that platform and yourself you go to parliament you look back to the people and say, I don't care about you people. When you do that, you are attempting to make your seat vacant. So yesterday, and what the speaker did was not different from what Michael Quay did. I must, I must add. But he, he disagrees with the current position of the, mind, and that uh, the is majority where, now. And that is where the MPP is unprincipled. See, a party that has no principles is not a party somebody must join. When Michael Quay ruled that a CMA had left the MPP and was now on the independent ticket, the MPP was happy. Today, a similar thing has happened. And the people who are involved also by their conduct, by their behavior, left their party and are on a different ticket. I'm sure you watched uh, Katie Hammond yesterday uh, saying that the speaker, then speaker Michael Okoye Ed. Where was he then? And that's why I said they are behaving like, a, like spoiled children. You know, a spoiled child, when you are playing football with him, and he's the owner of the ball, and you score him several times, he just carries his ball, I won't play again. Me Bobby, me ball. They are behaving like spoiled children. I've heard some of their lawyers, very senior lawyers, say that the conduct of those MPs was futuristic. And I ask the question, Laws are made for both the present and future. Laws are made for both present and the future. It's only on few occasions, and there are lawyers here, they know what I'm saying. It's only on few occasions that laws are made to take retrospective effect because of if they are tax laws or financial laws. And I will come back to you. No, that, is so, that all? Those are your preliminary comments. I want to get the preliminary comments <laughs> of the others, and I'll come back to you 
with 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 some more as you have. I'm coming to you, uh, Kwame Jantua, uh, based on the argument of Ibrahim Amaliba. Uh, what you also make of what has transpired, really, uh, since Parliament resumed from, from its recess. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to my panel members. The law is black and white, isn't it? When you go to 97, it's black and white. Can't vary it in any way. But unfortunately, the MPP have shot themselves in the foot. Michael Quay's uh, uh, ruling, huh? I think Michael Quay's ruling at the time was wrong. But let me ask, why do we have independent candidates? Why do we have uh, people who are part of a party decide that I'm going independent? Why? What is it within the party that allows them or makes them do that? And this particular situation with the former MP, he proved that he was right. And that there were machinations behind that got him out, not allowed him to stand. So he went independent and he proved to be right. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the president didn't help the situation. After talking to the chiefs of Formula, what did he say? He can't work with an independent candidate. Wasn't it the independent candidate who saved them in parliament? So we should be very careful. Look, politics is such that what goes around comes around. This has come around. It shot them in the foot. The machinations that we have behind closed doors, in making sure that you, you don't stand, this one will stand, this one will stand creates problems going forward. This is it. My preliminary comments, I don't want to go into details now, but 97 is, can I use the word, strict liability. So are you trying to it say... Says, it says, shall. And let, let, let me tell you why it's a living document today and tomorrow. When you read the heading by the side, it says, member, tenure of office of a member. That is the heading. Tenure of office of a member. So it's present and future, not past. Present and future. So you can't use that argument that, oh, he's standing because of the future. Can't use that argument. I, I, I want to get your, your uh, really, clarity on what he said. Why are people leaving? You're trying to say that those three individuals have decided to go independent because MPP is the problem. There's something that has gone wrong. That's why somebody decides to go independent. But what about the one who is rejoining after he left? Re, who, who, what do you call it? The, 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 the Yes. He's, but he's probably seen that he's done what he's done to help the MPP. So the MPP will take him back. So he's going to rejoin the MPP again. He's going to rejoin. Because the MPP constitution, does it allow independence to come back? Our, our, our constitution, does it allow? Ishak will be able to tell me. I'm not mm. sure. <laughs> Well, people have left and come back. Uh, Alan Kwejo Chairman yes, left the party yes, a number of yes. times so, and came back. So. so he's entitled to come back, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's entitled to come back to the party. He's, he's, seen, he's seen that it would help him. But, you see, and this is where it is so beautiful. Formula MP, eh, his position as second deputy was supported by the NDC. True or false? Supported by the NDC. It wasn't the MPP who supported it was the NDC who supported him. Now there is, there is a, there's a problem, there's another problem with this. Deputy speakers, eh? one should come from opposition, one should come from ruling party. The deputy speakers today, do they not both come from the MPP? Huh? Mm -hmm. Joe Weiss and Formina, isn't it both? Yes, is but that, now Formina is, is, is that, vacant. Is that right? So the speaker had to do what he had to do by the law. He told us how he decided. He went to the Constitution, he went to the standing orders, and he took uh, advice. And so far as he can see, he's vacant. It says, shall. A member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. So, if you know, and this is what I don't understand about us, because sometimes we bastardize the law. If you decide to go independent, the law says you shall vacate. The law says you shall yes, vacate. vacate. Vacate and go and do what you want to do. If you win, you come back. So, uh, 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 well, uh, Ishak, what yes. Abraham Amaliba and Kwame Jantua are basically saying is that the MPP has a problem. Um, and you're refusing to be principled as, as a political party. How do you respond to the two? 
Yes. Um, I think it's very unfortunate. They are playing politics. Um, when I came here, they saw lawyers. Politics. I thought we were going to talk about the law, but I came to meet pure, pure politicians. Um, I <laughs> think... Let me let me explain. I'm a politician and a lawyer, so uh, if it's necessary, I analyze the law purely. But we, we, are, are, we are parties. You've had your chance. We are parties and politicians. Please, please. We, we are parties. Let's respect each other. We go to the high seat to capture... <laughs> when they were chips. speaking, I allowed them to speak. So so it's good. But you cannot. Uh, we allow you to have integrity. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. You, you get the opportunity to rebut. No, no. You are impugned upon integrity. Am I a pirate sitting here? Am I a pirate? Mr. Malib, I'll come back to you. No, no, but I don't know where I'm not for what you know. I know I cut you short. I didn't know. I'll come back to you. Why do you say we're not lawyers? I didn't know to say. No, no, I never said we're not lawyers. I didn't know to say 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 we're a wrong decision. And I have PNCP. heard people saying that because Professor Mike made a decision, it was right for him to follow that decision. They call him precedence. I don't think it was a precedent. A precedent, even the Speaker of Parliament himself said, what the decision that was made was not binding on him. So that tells me it wasn't a precedent at all. So for people to argue that if the previous Speaker made a decision, this Speaker ought to follow that decision. It's illogical for me. What is the logic here? I believe the previous speaker decision was wrong. And this current speaker should have departed. And for you to argue that the previous speaker made a decision, follow him. You are more or less telling me that if you are wrong, you have to be consistently wrong. So what's wrong? That How is come actually the MPP stayed with it until now. It, it doesn't matter. I think it was wrong <laughs> legally. <laughs> I am telling you, it was. I am here to talk about the law. Whatever decision that was made, I believe Professor McQuay's decision was wrong because it wasn't the decision. Uh, that decision wasn't for Speaker of Parliament. But the, question... the Constitution is very clear. Who makes that particular decision? The Constitution says, if you cease to be a member, of which will come to that, whether they have actually ceased to be members under this parliament, the Constitution gives the power to make that decision under Article 99. Uh, clause 1, sub clause uh, A, to that of the High Court, not the Speaker of Parliament. But when it became convenient, yes. the MPP found it necessary yes. using its own constitution Listen. that Andrea Siama had quote unquote betrayed the party and didn't have to be part of the party. I don't disagree with you that the MPP wrote to the Speaker of Parliament to say that he is no longer a member. I will come to why it's so is different from the present one. They formally informed the Speaker that they have expelled him from the party. And that was the basis of that particular decision. But as I said, the Speaker of Parliament at that time was wrong because of Article 99, Clause 1, Subclause A. So it doesn't mean that, so it is illogical to continue to argue that if we we're wrong previously, we have to be consistently wrong. That's a point I'm trying to make. And them here putting that argument sounds very, very illogical for me. So if you want me to go to the substance of my argument, I don't mind proceeding. Otherwise, this will be my preliminary comments that we shouldn't. All right. So I will come to you, uh, 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 Andrew Apia Dankwa, very shortly. But we have on the line with us Harry Naidrisu, the man who filed this petition before the speaker. Uh, he's also a former minority leader. Good morning to you, sir, if you can hear us. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you to your esteemed listeners and to your good self. Mm. I mean, you you petitioned the speaker. We saw that petition you sent to him dated 15th of October, just on the day that Parliament resumed from recess. And I'm sure you observed all the arguments and counter arguments that ensued afterward. And yesterday, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, found reason in what you submitted to him. What's your immediate reaction to what has transpired? I think that Ghana's democracy 
is strengthened. I think that parliamentary constitutional supremacy has been established by the ruling of right honorable speaker Alban Bakun. It means that in Ghana, the 1992 constitution reigns supreme. That is what it should be as a supreme law of our country, subject to what the Supreme Court may think or may reason. The words in Article 97, 1, G, and 8 are uh, the ordinary meaning of it makes sense to every person that if you came to Parliament on the ticket of a political party and defected to an independent, you must vacate your seat. So the Speaker only did what is needful of him by law and by the Constitution, but even myself in making a comment on it, I see to the fact that Parliament in Ghana is not sovereign and Parliament is subject to the courts of Ghana and Parliament is subject to the Supreme Court. So until the contrary is uh, proven, I think that this ruling is apt in law. It emphasizes constitutional supremacy, as I've explained. Now, let me give you a common sense example. Assuming I, I was an MPP minister today, and then I announced on the floor that I'm defecting to run for NDC in the next parliament, do you think I will survive even as minister before the day ends? Mm. No. So, the parliament is reacting to what I call the rule against defection. Article 97, 1G and 8 is to protect members of parliament from oscillating and moving from one political party to the other, from one independent party to a political uh, party. And I think that the ruling ordinarily should not be questioned even in the court. As to the process that has been filed by the majority leader, Honorable Afenio Martin, where there is respect for systems and respect for parliament as an institution, even that process was wrong. Parliament hasn't taken a decision. So what was the Supreme Court going to do? There is nothing before the Supreme Court until yesterday evening and this morning. Yet you file a process to anticipate the thinking and decision of parliament. That, in my view, is wrong in law. The good development for Ghana about this ruling is that on the basis, even though the Speaker has declared the seat vacant, on the basis of the provisions of Article 112, sub clause 6 of the Constitution, there will be no need for a by election because it provides that where the period to a general election is less than three months to the conduct of a general election, there will be no by election. So even though the speaker has declared the seat vacant, the country is saved some resources. We don't need to spend money to conduct a by election. Mm. What it means is that the NDC will form a rather thin majority, just one more, as we saw at the beginning of uh, 2021, against the NPP. So the balance of power will tilt and change favorably to the NDC. What would the NDC do with the parliamentary majority? We have a major Galamse crisis in the country. I expect the NDC majority to respond to that. We have overborrowing, which has led to unsustainable debt. I expect an NDC, I was in the majority to respond to that. So I think that constitutionalism and constitutional and parliamentary jurisprudence is enriched by this uh, ruling. As to those who are arguing that they have only filed for future. Then in future, are they, is that, can you describe that as defection? Certainly not. I mean, if I now choose to go and run in Tamale South uh, for 20, on December 7th as independent, if the people so vote me, I'll come as independent. God forbid, though, <laughs> that uh, not me. So it's, 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 it's about the law and respect for the law. And there's precedent. Professor Michael Quay, then as speaker, ruled on the same matter. And now they are arguing that a political party must trigger the action. No. Read the words of the Constitution where it says a member of parliament shall vacate a seat if then it leaves A, B, up to G and H. It didn't say a political party must tell parliament. 
if if I resign as MP, I'll vacate my seat. Whether a political party which sponsored me or not have written to the speaker or not, I have resigned. I will vacate the seat. M so. Mr. Jisoo, you've just answered partially my next question about the suit filed at the Supreme Court by Alexander Penyomakin, the now minority leader. And I heard you say that it looks like the Supreme Court has nothing to look at in terms of our law and constitution. Do I hear you say you expect the court to throw out this very case before it? My strongest view is that the action before the Supreme Court is premature in law and should not be tolerated. Is premature. In any case, it will be difficult for the courts to injunct another organ of state, the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, from exercising its constitutional uh, mandate. That will amount to judicial intrusion into parliamentary uh, exercise, parliament exercise of this uh, lawful mandate under Article 93 of the Constitution. So, Ghana should not worry about a by election. Article 1126 provides that we are safe and there will be no need to spend resources. So it means that Parliament will remain as it is until after the 7th December election and until after 7th January when a new Parliament and a new President is sworn in. So President Akufuadu now works on two fractured legs, lame President exiting government in the next 90 days and he has no control of Parliament. But we should use that to strengthening oversight and accountability of the executives. And I my, strongly as you. My, my last question to you. Uh, I mean, we've heard the... I've heard you say, as well as uh, members of the NDC, even Ibrahim Amaliba, who is right here in the studio with us, that precedence was already set. And so that should have simply be, uh, been followed. And that's exactly what you believe Alban Bagbain did. Yet we've had the now minority members saying that uh, yourself connived with the speaker to bring this ruling as it were. How do you react to that briefly before you go? Not, not, not at all. Even yesterday, I didn't speak to the speaker nor have any engagement with him. I only walked in when he sat in to start reading his uh, verdict. The Speaker himself is a very respected, experienced uh, member of Parliament and very respected uh, lawyer. And as I said, it is not for me to work constitutional uh, law. The authority on this matter says that give words their ordinary meaning, common sense meaning. Until there is absurdity, then you can look for the secondary meaning of the words. So when it says that, you were elected to parliament. Is it true that the four were elected to parliament? Yes. Were they elected on the ticket of a political party or independent candidate? Yes. Have they filed? That is what we have to prove evidential. So we'll look at the notice of poll. That will be issued by the Electoral Commission, and that will be our evidence that they have, in fact, defected from their original parties that sponsored them into parliament. Don't forget, sovereignty resides in the people. You got the mandate of the people to come to parliament. You are walking away from parliament. You haven't told the same people that you are walking away. This is what the law says that you should be held accountable to for. We'll have to end it here. Thank you very much, Harry Naijisu. He's a member of parliament for uh, Tamale South, as well as former minority leader, the man who filed that petition that has now got the ruling in favor of the NDC uh, from the speaker. I'm coming to you, Mr. Pia Dankwa. You didn't have the opportunity to uh, give us your preliminary comment before uh, Mr. Idrisu came in. What are your uh, initial comments, perhaps, plus what Harry Naijisu just told us? <coughs> Viewers, a good morning, and my learned colleagues here, a good morning. I also have a preliminary reaction to a comment you made. Alan Chamantin never left the party and came back. The only time he left the party is when he left recently, and he's not coming back. Uh, so let's oh, be clear. But the uh, Kufu after Kufu he, left, he, he, I he, mean... He, he didn't leave. He, he, he didn't leave. I think he passed. I don't know why he was so <laughs> fixated with some of these. He left last year. That's the only time he left the party. And I can tell you that he's not coming back. So I think... Uh, okay. I mean, we wouldn't have to talk yeah, about... We wouldn't have to argue about that. that. But the records are there uh, for us the, to... And the to, records to are see. saying that he never left the party. He only left last year. He isn't coming back. Please yeah, go ahead not. with your comment. Well, I, I, I personally don't see what the... Uh, the, the, the confusion mm -hmm. on, on this issue. I think my brother was... And, and, and I stand all forces with my senior brother here. I think it's, it's pretty clear. 
as in for me, I I I I, I agreed with the speaker's position, as in uh, uh, Okui, and I agree with the speaker's position. The question is, the three MPs who are going independent are they still members of their party today, as of today? And don't let us even project into the future. Is Mamli Morrison a member of the New Patriotic Party as we speak today? She she is no longer a member of the party. The day I decided to leave the party and join and join uh, uh, Alan, that day I ceased to be a member of the party. Mm. The constitution is clear that if he leaves a party of which he was a member at the time of his of his election to parliament, so for me it's pretty it's pretty clear they left their parties and so they must leave parliament. We can have a debate as to the the essence of this clause whether or not there must be some form of reforms there. Because my personal view is that when you go on the, uh, to parliament, on the back of your constituency, your constituency, not necessarily on the, the back party. Of, the, of the party. And so, uh, 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 what is the sense in saying? Because the person has left the party, you, uh, the people should be without... So you think that that provision should be reviewed to favor constituencies? Uh, so that's what I'm saying. We can have a debate on that. But as things stands now, uh, the clause as it stands now. And secondly, who has the power to make that order per the standing orders of parliament is the speaker according to article 110 parliament has the right to control their own proceedings and they do so by their standing orders and michael Okoye actually said that in the exactly interview. i had my brother make a, a reference to article 99 we shouldn't be confused Article 99 is clear he said that where there is any question concerning if you let me read the high court shall be have shall, shall have jurisdiction to hear any and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of member has become vacant. The question uh, the, the speaker answered was a question of whether or not the seat had uh, was vacant. What he did was to inform the whole country that because they've left their parties, they are vacating parliament. So their seats became vacant after the action he took yesterday. Now, if you think that there's any issue concerning the seat that has become vacant today. That's when your right to go to the high court to uh, to uh, to uh, to challenge the vacancy or not. Uh, so my view is that what happened yesterday, per the the constitution as we have it now, was perfect. The sub bit for me is the clear lack of principle from some of our politicians and, and in this case the members of the of the of the MPP. Because if they are saying that they didn't believe in what Michael Quaid did and they took an oath that they were going to defend, protect the constitution, they have not have they not breached that oath if they sat down quietly when in their view what Speaker Michael Quaid did the last time was wrong, wrong and they kept quiet against the oath they took to protect our laws. Clearly, we have a bunch of people who don't have any respect for principle. So you're, and you're indirectly saying that they chose party over the country as, at the as, Exactly. And if this continues, we stand the risk of reducing our democracy to a cacistocracy. And, 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 and so the people of Ghana must be very clear in their minds that when we are going to vote come 2024, right, right now it's clear that we have a bunch of politicians who clearly do not have any loyalty to the country. They think their loyalty is to their party. And they are ready to breach the oath they took to we the people of Ghana, insofar as it protects their party. If it means that by their protection of their party, that position will be adverse to the common interests of this country. We should have that in mind when we are choosing our leaders and make choices that reflect our values, make choices that will project it our, our democracy, make choices that will put us in a position to best gain from the promise of democracy. M That's Mr. Maliba, uh, it seems promise. I cut you short earlier when you were talking, and of course with a commentary coming from former minority leader supporting this argument that the NDC, or what the speaker did is right. My brother, who is the only lawyer on this platform, <laughs> and the rest of us are Sudanese pirates, made reference to Article 99, and he misled the whole country. My, uh, he touched on it. But Article 99 is talking about whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or not. What we had in parliament yesterday has nothing to do with whether a CMA and other three were validly elected. It has nothing to do with that. So the lawyer here is misleading all of us. We, the pirates, are rather on the right path. Now, 
when you hear, I was saying that because people are saying that it is in the future, then it will mean that these people intended that in the ninth parliament, they intend to go on, on independent or go independent. And so you can't count it but if but So you can't count it as part of this parliament. That, that argument, and I had senior lawyers making it, people who are far advanced in law than me, saying it. And I find that very, very laughable and incongruous. Because then what will be the use of Article 97? It will, it will be of no use. Then we just have to expunge it. Because, like the speaker said, if it's going to be futuristic, you would have by then aligned. You would have by then aligned. And so there wouldn't be a breach of this. So they should, they should, they should reverse their thinking and understand that this ruling was made so as to protect the sanctity of parliament. The next thing is that what can, and uh, the former minority leader mentioned it, yeah. what can we do with our majority? He has mentioned certain things. I also think that we should repeal, and we can do it, because the, the new standing orders allow for private members' bill. And this private members' bill can be used to repeal the, 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 the tax, the betting tax, eh? because we've already promised it. And then also repeal the e-levy. That, for me, will be satisfactory to a good people of this country. Because people are laboring under huge, huge taxes to the extent that people cannot import goods. I wanted to buy four doors for my car because the doors of my car were rusted. I had to go to Nigeria. Because here, even if you get it, the price was too much. And so, for me, we need to reduce the tax burden with this few days that we have become majority. But Afenio Markin is behaving like he has a birthright to become the majority leader. That is not his birthright. He must be told now, that how, these how, things... How do you say that? But look at the way he was behaving yesterday. See how he even preempted the speaker's uh, uh, ruling. So he, in effect, in effect, Afenio Markin knew what was right. He knew the outcome of Mr. Speaker's ruling. He knew. He knew. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have gone to court. And it was a wrong procedure by filing an injunction to stay the hands of Parliament. We are running what is called separation of powers. No one organ can interfere in the work of the other uh, 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 organs' uh, work. But we've also seen uh, situations where the speaker has said that because the case is in court, I'm not touching it. And a clear example is the LGBTQ one. Which one? The LGBTQ was passed. What we are saying is that uh, 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 court, the court cannot stop parliament from working on the floor of parliament. That's what I'm talking about. You can't stop it. Just as how parliament you cannot pass laws to undo what the judiciary has done. So if, 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 if judiciary sentenced somebody to five years, parliament cannot pass a law to reduce it by three years. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Uh -huh. So whilst they are doing their constitutional work, none of the organs can interfere. And yet you want to file an injunction. To do what? To do what? To stop parliament from working. And you are the majority leader then asked the yesterday. yesterday. You must be promoting the integrity and the, the supremacy of parliament. And you have gone to do this. Because he felt this time the speaker was And wrong. I'm saying that it is wrong procedure. Mm. No, his feelings, I don't care. He can be hemorrhaging. You understand? He can be bleeding as of this morning. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about, he talks about fidelity to the law. I'm talking about the law. So if you do that, you are weakening parliament by that action. And lastly, 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 we must be careful the way 
we use the judiciary to make rules for parliament. We must be careful. Because if you begin to do that, then let's just call up parliament and then let the judiciary be taking decisions. The way we allow the judiciary to interfere in the work of parliament, everything is small, quick, uh, Supreme Court, everything is small, quick, Supreme Court, it is not good for the parliament that we have. It's just like how the military used to make coup d'etat and disband parliament. What you are also doing is akin to that. Mm. It's not good for parliament. Uh, Mr. Jantra, your own thoughts. You know, it was very disrespectful for the former majority leader to take an injunction in the Supreme Court against the Speaker. Wasn't the Speaker doing his work? Doesn't the standing orders of Parliament allow the Speaker to do what he did? So why would you go and take an injunction against him doing his own work? Very disrespectful. Very disrespectful to the Speaker and very disrespectful for the country. And that is where the indiscipline comes in. Where people feel that because they have power, they can act in any way, ultra virus. It's wrong. And the majority, the former majority leader, should have known better. If this were a parliamentary system, would they not have crossed carpet? They would have crossed carpet to the other side. And he, the former MP, going for MPP, going back to MPP, he crossed carpet. You are independent. Your constituents voted for you. Not when you were in the MPP, but when you stood as an independent. Did you go back to the constituency? to tell your constituents that this is what I want to do. Did you? So where did that power come from? Or you did it on your own? That's indiscipline. And unfortunately, politicians today are indisciplined against the law. Indisciplined. The law is there. You cannot bypass the law. What is said is said. This, 97, black and white. Don't try and infer anything in it. Now, let's see what the Supreme Court now says. Let's see. I hope and I believe the Supreme Court will interpret this as it is. So you're saying that there what is Haruna no, told us some earlier, people are be. saying that there's a lacuna. There's no lacuna anywhere. There's no lacuna anywhere because we always try and do things, eh, especially where our party is concerned, to defend our party. And you get a lot of MPP commentators. They know the thing is wrong, but they'll come and sit on platforms and say it is right. After we leave, they say, mm, what you said was right. A lot of them do it. And I've been on the media since 2004, so I know it. They will tell you, ah, Mr. Janta, I think it's right, but we, we can't say it. Say it. And that is one thing about our politics that we should try and change. If your leader is doing a wrong thing and you're in a party, say it. The way Boris Johnson in the UK, eh? His own party people told him, if you don't go, we, we are leaving. What did he have to do? He was forced to leave. How can the president say he can't work with an independent candidate? How can the president say that because the Formula MP was going independent, they would not get a, 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 a development in their area? It would be difficult for them to get development in their area. You, as president, aren't you supposed to divide development within the country equally? Aren't you supposed to? And some of the blame comes from him because he has become a tin god within the MPP. What he says is what goes. Nobody can talk. 90 how many uh, MPs went to the Flagstaff House to tell him to sack uh, uh, Kenufuriata? What happened when they came back? What happened? So for me, I don't want anybody. Politicians shouldn't bastardize the law. The moment you bastardize the law, the citizens also feel that you can bastardize the law. Look at how we drive in this country. Are there not laws in terms of driving? Look at how we drive. And nobody seems to want to enforce the law. The police can't enforce the law because they are scared. Hey, when Mr. Ishak is sitting in a four by four. His car is, is what you call it, smoked. So you can't stop him. Look, in this country, you cannot have smoked windows on, in your front, on your front uh, side, the driver's side and passenger. It can't be smoked. But in this smoke, four by five, they smoked. Do they stop them? No. We are bastardizing the law, and if we don't stop that, it will come to bite us as it has, as it has come to bite the MPP from the decision they took the last time. Yeah, Mr. Piadankwa, and especially in your, your comments and also in relation to what the NDC intends to do with this majority 50 days to the December 7 general election. Well, the first thing I wish they would do, I know my brother Maliba would disagree with me, 
But the first thing they will do, it shouldn't matter whether it will succeed or not, is to start the process to impeach the president. <laughs> That's what you expect them to do. Yeah. <laughs> listen, 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 so listen to me. So listen, in the US, they've attempted impeachment four times. Not once has those attempts succeeded in removing the president. But it should be on record. <laughs> but it should be on record that in, that in 2024, the people of Ghana, believing that Nanado haven't wantonly breached the terms of the oath he took to the people of Ghana, to want to be faithful to Ghana, He's been unfaithful. Take the Galamse issue, uh, how he's handled the Galamse issue. The economy. You take how he's managed. In fact, before I even come to the economy, his reckless appointment of people who are known to be MPP members onto the EC, that's undermining and making it practically impossible for the EC to discharge his duties. You understand? Those reckless statements you are talking about, his inability to recognize that he's president of Ghana, not president of his party. Statements like, you did not vote for my MP, so I'm bring developments to you. That's a confession of a dereliction of duty. It's, it is a confession of a dereliction of duty. So, Alan, the evidence of the president having breached his oath are, are numerous. And I hope that the NDC will use this majority, no matter how small it is, and no matter how short the time is, to first of all immediately start the process to impeach the president. He may not be removed, but it will go on record that the president was impeached. Mm. Now, my second view, and that was not about what the NDC does with it or not, but I think we, we as a people have a problem. We have a problem with the political culture we've created in this country. And I think because we've had a non-leader over the past eight years, this issue has come to the fore. And it's come to the fore a lot of the time. Who are we loyal to? Are we loyal to our country or are we loyal to our political party? Yeah, 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 you yeah, understand? Yeah, because unless and until we create a political culture that is participatory in nature, a culture which dictates that our motivation is to ask ourselves what is in the best interest of the country as against what is in the best interest of my party. Unless we create a political culture which is not parochial, in nature because we have a system where people we give our powers to when they are faced with answering serious questions which have in impacts all of our lives their sole consideration is what isn't it for me because like my senior brothers rightly said and i agree with them on all forces because if you see your parliament leader of parliament and your, your your fundamental job as majority of parliament is to protect the sanctity and power you undermine parliament you are ready to undermine parliament, subjugate the independence of parliament to the judiciary by the actions the majority leader is taking. Maybe you can also take steps to also impeach him. Mm. Yeah, 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 understand. So, I think the benefit, the major benefit of this misrule by Nanado is to, to tell us the fundamental weaknesses in the system we've created and that the burden is on every single Ghanaian that we need to talk together, come and create the right culture that will make us able to fulfill the, 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 the basis and the terms and the promise of this democracy we took upon ourselves. Other than that, if we don't do that, like I said earlier, and I'll repeat it again, we stand the danger of seeing this democracy being turned into a kakistocracy. Thank you. And I'm coming to you, uh, Mr. Shaq Ibrahim. Thank I think you. what I hear the gentlemen <clears throat> say, including what Haruna Idrisu, uh, former minority leader, say, is that uh, the MPP has to accept it when you're wrong. And you need to help build the kind of governance system that we've chosen to, 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 to uh, go with. But the party is refusing to and choosing rather expediency, political expediency over the country. How do you react to these? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me take the opportunity to clarify something that uh, my colleague here tried to mislead the public. Um, what I said was, I thought we were coming here to talk law, but I can see that you people have moved to the politics aspect. I'm going to do law. It didn't say that you are not lawyers. So let me clarify that side. It was misleading, and for you to say you are even a parent of are, Sudan. We are, we are. If you chose we are to be here to do law. If you chose to be a parent of we, Sudan, we, we that's your business. We are not man. supposed to do law. Here. I think it's clear that, that okay. uh, we are not each of you is here. representing a political so party, having so said you can't that, deny that. Yes. So having said that, let me make something very clear. 
I believe at the end of the day, the Supreme Court would overturn this particular ruling by the Speaker. As I've already said, uh, the ruling of the Speaker is unlawful. He failed to pay fidelity to the law. Um, so let's go to the substantive matter now. Now, Article 97, um, Article 97, Clause 1, Subclause G, is the basis of the Speaker's uh, ruling. That was the basis of the complaint. Um, what does it say? A member of parliament shall vacate the seat in parliament, and then I'm coming to the G. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. So the second leg is what affects most of them. G is the formula, uh, the H is for the formula MP. If he was elected a member of parliament, as an independent candidate and joins a political party. Now, I believe the first thing we need to do is to find out whether they have left their parties or not. And there are three ways one can determine. One way would be for them to resign and leave and say, this is my resignation letter. The second way would be for the party to expel them. If you look at the 2020 um, I mean, if you look at the former, the former MP. Estiama. Yes, that was exactly what MPP did. They expelled him and they informed the speaker that they have expelled him. So that's how we knew he ceased to be a member at that time. Nonetheless, the party, Article 97 let me, AG. Let me come. Yes, the party, no, I'm coming to all that. The party expels him by informing the speaker. As I said, I have principles. My principle was that it wasn't the speaker decision to make. So I believe what the speaker did by expelling him was wrong. Now, some of you have argued that... Whose decision was it then to make? I will come to that. That's, I will come to that. So I believe it was wrong. Some of you said because it, 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 he did it, it served as a precedent, and therefore the current speaker doing it is wrong. And I said that is illogical. If somebody is wrong and you are urging them they must be consistently wrong, that is wrong. Now, the third way that you can determine whether people have left a party or not is if their conduct has become incompatible with membership. And I think this is where they are basing it. Whether they are asked by filing as independent candidate for, to, to enter into the next parliament is incompatible of being membership. Is that not where we are? But it was when Isiyama wanted to. In let, let me just explain. No, no, I said, oh, you, maybe you were not listening to me. I said he was expelled. His party informed the speaker I heard that, that he's no more a member. So that's not what, that is not the basis. So that particular point that was made over there is not the same way we are saying here. Here, MP, MPP haven't expelled any member and they haven't resigned. The only way you can say they have left is their conduct by filing to, uh, by filing to come to the next parliament as independent. So you are using their conduct element mm -hmm. to say that their conduct mm -hmm. is incompatible of being membership. Is that not what they said? Mm -hmm. So when can we say somebody's conduct is enough to be incompatible with membership? There are two theories. If you go to philosophy to determine whether somebody's conduct is, is uh, incompatible with membership, mm -hmm. one way would be to say that their conduct is more than merely proprietary. Others would say you have to wait for the last act to determine whether they have left. Mm -hmm. Now, from what the speaker have done, I believe he's using more than merely preparation. The fact that they have filed mm -hmm. to enter the next parliament. Mm -hmm. So is that not it? Mm -hmm. Now, if you go back to uh, the, this particular provision, go back to Article 97. He said, if he seeks to remain in parliament as what? As independent. Mm -hmm. This particular parliament, they are not seeking to remain as independent. What they are seeking to is the next parliament. So I believe the, equal, the Supreme Court is, is going to use a purposive approach in interpreting this particular provision. And you ask yourself, what was the purpose for including this provision in our constitution? And as you rightly said, we don't want a one-party system. So the, 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 the mischief that it was meant to cure was to make sure that a, we have a strong government and we have a strong opposition. Uh, uh, that a, 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 the 
parties do not go and steal MPs from anywhere. Mr. Their action is not going to affect this current parliament at all. M Mr. Ibrahim, yes. uh, what would you say to people yes. who would argue that the MPP is struggling to argue this out because really you think that you have a party interest to protect uh, 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 at this time. The intention alone yes. to, yes. Uh, the declaration of the yes. intention alone, yes. per your own constitution yes. and the interpretation yes. of it, is it not a misconduct, quote unquote, enough for you to say that, okay, if you want to go, just go. Okay, let, let me come to that. I'll come to your and argument. if you could do that but in like 40 me, seconds, me, then I'll give the opportunity me to So others. I was saying that the person who has a right to uh, Article 99 plus 2, as I said, you were doing politics. When you read Article 99, I remember pointing to this, my friend, you stopped where the determined membership of parliament alone. But there was all, did you read all of it? No. You conveniently left it out. If you look at it, look at your constitution well. It said the High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any questions whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament. That's where you stopped. You, that's where I exactly accuse you of doing politics. Seat the next one. Or the art of a member, the, or, or the seat of a member has become vacant. You left that out. Because of politics. I want to come to you, Mr. So it is a high court that determines whether a member, whether a seat in parliament is vacant. But you also do understand, and I want to move it on to Ibrahim It is not the speaker of parliament. But the speaker So I believe right. that, that the speaker, so it should have gone to the high court. So somebody, so I believe that somebody should have gone to the high court to invoke this. Mr. Ibrahim. If they, are, if they think they are refusing to leave, and if there's issues of interpretation, then the High Court would then refer you to the Supreme Mr. Court Abraham, I think to you've make made the point. But you also do understand so, that the okay. orders of Parliament We are not struggling give. to explain it. Let me now answer your question. We are not struggling to explain it. I'll just explain it to you. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. If you don't understand it because you're not a lawyer, the no, I don't have to be. Understand I don't. I understand. The yes. So I said they will use made. a proposal to to What is the to purpose? Understand what what is, is the purpose? No, you said we are struggling to explain it. I have just explained it. The first one is whether they have ceased to be members. And I said there are three approaches to it. And you, the second you one is them. who has the right to decide. I believe it's a high court, not the Speaker of Parliament not of Ghana. Not the Speaker of Parliament Thank of you. Ghana, you, you, you say. But Mr. Mariva, you may want to react to that, but I want us to move yes. forward with it. Uh, yesterday, we had Apenyo Marking, we had uh, 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 also uh, Katie Hammond and P. Fasqua saying that they were not going to be part of this parliament until the Supreme Court has ruled on this provision that Apenyo Marking took took to, to, to the Supreme Court. How now are you as a minority, a majority, a majority in the House going to ensure that you deal with this resistance with the days you have going into the 2024 general election? But let me start by saying that the ruling of Mr. Speaker is in tandem with the MPP's own constitution. And I'm going to read forfeiture of membership, what the MPP constitution says. A member, of, a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate eh, against the officially elected member of the party have this independent candidate stood against official members of the party in the constituency? The answer is yes. And who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for, for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored eh, a candidate in a general election automatically forfeits his or her. It's automatic by operation of law. Mm. So this ruling by Mr. Speaker reinforces the MPP position. All that the provision is talking about has caught all those people. They are standing against an official party candidate. And so is that not the basis upon which the speaker also ruled? So stop your distance. But you see, why they were happy with Speaker O'Quay's ruling is that in the Speaker O'Quay's ruling, it didn't affect their majority, you know? That time they could do away with one person. 
<laughs> and that is a selfish interest that they have. Now, this ruling, which is similar to Sibgaukwe's ruling, has actually reduced their majority, and that's where they have a problem. I can tell you, and I can bet you, if it were just one person, and yet they would have retained their majority, they wouldn't be up in arms. It's all about selfish interest. So, I would say that what the speaker did is not wrong. What he's talking about doesn't apply in this current situation. And so, look, me, I'm just going to allow him to, uh, rat, uh, what does they say, rant. And then the law has taken his course. He can do what he wants. Well, Kwame Jantua, I, I asked uh, Mr. Maliba earlier about how he expects the a majority now to sail through with 50 days to the to the general election because the minority now says that it is going to resist this ruling from the speaker in the house the, so that ghana doesn't suffer because of political <coughs> interests well just to go back to what ishak said that it was a high court that was supposed to rule when you go to article 110 in the constitution it says subject to the provisions of this constitution parliament may by standing orders, regulate its own procedure. So the speaker, procedure, well, the speaker has the <laughs> what the speaker does. It's not the procedure of parliament. Not the procedure in parliament. <laughs> Doesn't the standing orders give him the the mandate to do it? It's in the constitution. Mm. Now your question was with regards to. How the How? majority now can sail through well, so Ghana doesn't which suffer. Which of the majorities? The new majority. Exactly. Well, the, the, the minority, the minority, says, the minority says they are waiting to hear what the what do you call Supreme it? Court Supreme will Court say. will say. But don't the minority, the current minority, have a responsibility to their constituents? Don't they? Aren't they supposed to be in parliament to represent their constituents, irrespective? Aren't they? Can't they sit in Parliament for things to go on whilst these things are at the Supreme Court, but you boycott? Whose interest are you uh, benefiting? Is it your own interest or is it the people's interest? Mm. Look, Ghanaians, look at this. Next election, any parliamentarian eh, who didn't seek your interest and sought their own interest because of their party, vote them out. We want parliamentarians who would come in and do the work of the people. That is why they are there. And I, I, would, I would wish, I would wish, you see, and this has got to do with maturity. Irrespective of where the position is, you owe allegiance to the people. The president swore an oath, didn't he? He swore an oath to the country to handle our finances and everything with the country. He swore an oath to hold it right. Has he been able to do it? Handle our finances. Has he, uh, has he been able to do it? What is, what is the debt of Ghana today? <coughs> 769 billion <laughs> cities. Didn't he promise to, 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 to handle our finances? Where are we today? Galamse, Galamse, you waited for organized labor to push you before you act, when others were telling you. IMF, you waited to the last minute because you said we are proud and the country was going down. Has he been able to handle this country well? We are all suffering because of his inaction. We are all suffering because of his inaction. And talking about managing of our finances, I want to go through or remind us of some of the pending government businesses and how you think. And I'll come to you. Yes, and you have the opportunity to respond to that as well. So we have you. You. I'll come to you as well. Yes. So. <laughs> So I just want to remind us of the pending government business right now. Two of President Akofuado's Supreme Court nominees, tax waivers, and we've heard uh, Mr. Maliba talking about it, that they are going to deal with that. Also, International Development Association of the World Bank Loan Facility, Architect Registration Bill 2024, Economic and Organized Crime Office Amendment Bill, Vaccines Development and Manufacturing Bill, Environmental Protection Agency Bill 2024, Measure of Electricity Company of Ghana, and Northern Electricity Distribution Company Bill. I know the minority then had issue with this. And also there is the Business Regulatory Reform Commission Bill. And I'll just mention uh, there are three more, but I'll oh, mention what... One. The VRA one is very important. The Office of uh, the of administrator of two lands university of course the vra one you talk about measure of water river authority and Bwipa authority bill so all these things are there and just very briefly before i go to uh, mr pia dankwa and you have the opportunity to address those two the, issues the the, the 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 current majority should take the pertinent bills 
that affects the people. The VRA one affects the people directly. For me, that's the first one they should look at. The first bill they should look at. Because what are they trying to do? They're trying to take the authority and power away from VRA. And some of the, what they're trying to do has personal interest in there. Has personal interest in there. And they should look at it. How can you dismantle VRA? How? With the kind of expertise VRA has, how can you dismantle? How can you move eh? uh, 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 the, the, oh, the, VRA is hydro. Mm. The other ones they do thermal. Oh, thermal. How can you move thermal eh, to IPPs? Isn't it suicidal if IPPs decide to strangle you because you haven't paid them? What will happen to this country? But, As we speak, but, Asogli has exactly. Suspended. But this thing has really got to do with personal interest. And I keep saying, if we do not stop this personal interest thing that we are doing with our politics, it's going to sink this country. Galam say, is it not personal interest? It's not personal interest. So I hope the new majority that has come in will look at these things dispassionately. Take the personal interest out, but the interest of Ghanaians is what you've got to promote. Because the MPP, unfortunately, having been able to promote the interest of Ghanaians. Ms. Apia Dankwa, you have the floor to respond to how you think the majority now can sail through with the minority's resistance and these bills that are currently government business, as it were, before Parliament. Well, so just before uh, I, would, uh, I respond to your question, I think it's necessary that we understand, I mean, in answer to the issue my brother here raised, that the Speaker has not acted out of virus, his powers. As in, if, if you read Article 1102, mm -hmm. together with... Uh, 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 order 18 of the outstanding orders. And order 18 says that the seat of a member shall be declared vacant by Mr. Speaker under clause 1 uh, IB to H of Article 97 of the Constitution. I think so. That's pretty clear. Now, and I love your question because as an if, that's if I believe what the purpose is. What is happening puts to the fore whether or not our, our MPs, both the majority and um, Minority. minority. What fools them is their desire to do good by Ghana or to play these their political games. Because you have a situation where right now they are the majority, so they must push government business in parliament. Are they going to say that they are going to stifle <coughs> government only because of their parochial uh, 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 interest? I think so. Like my big brother, Lawyer like Dantra said, Ghana should open their eyes. And they should open their eyes not just on the NPP, but also on the NDC. Because, and as in, and I, I won't be specific on any one bill. I think all the bills are relevant. Now, if... But time doesn't allow them to pass Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that why I, I said I, they should pick. What I'm saying, I don't, have the, I don't have the time to go into the specifics <laughs> of all the bills. But should the majority decide, and when I say majority, I mean the NDC, mm. or course, in parliament, should they decide to stifle government business? Then Ghanaians would know <laughs> that listen, we are in a we find ourselves in a very tight corner. Mm. That the people that we give our powers to to create that right, the, the right structures, economically, socially, politically, culturally, would 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 derelict on those duties insofar as it would it would it would it would advance their personal political ambitions. And also it would be the height of disappointment if the MPP go ahead with their threat that they are going to more or less boycott parliament Island. because of this issue. Then, then what it tells us is what I've always known, that they don't care about the country. All they care about is their personal interest. All they care about is their personal <laughs> interest. And you have about 30 seconds to react to any of the comments okay. made and we'll thank, wrap up thank, our conversation. Thank you very much. Um, I think, the, as I've already mentioned, the... the the speaker acted unlawfully. He did not pay fidelity to the law. And therefore, as far as I'm concerned, as far as MPP is concerned, nothing has changed. MPP remains majority. The NDCs and other small parties remains minority. Having said that, they are reading Article 110 and then compare it with 99 to say that Parliament has a right to determine procedure. You hear the word procedure, but Article 99 talk specifically the inconstitutional law, we have a principle called lex specialis. Don't we have it? Meaning if there is something specific and there is something that is general, 
the specific take precedence over general. Would you want to if you it? compare those two articles, 99 is very specific. So how can you use a general thing over specific thing? Let me ask the you. Principal this, is not specific. this is not No, procedure. It didn't talk membership. What the what the speaker did it was said no procedure. procedure. What the speaker did was no, no procedure. No, determining membership. He actually referred to the standing orders of No, standing parliament. order doesn't take precedence okay. over the constitution. Okay. Okay. So if this, this is in the constitution, the one, one, this is in the constitution. It's general. Okay. Dealing with parliament. It, 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 it is in the yeah. constitution. Okay. Yes. So can you land on your on your thoughts? Yes. So my point is that you can use at Article 110 as a basis of the, spe uh, of the speaker decision. Because Article 99, clause 1, sub clause uh, the A is very, very clear, it's specific. The gentleman on the table, and that's my final question yes. to you, and we'll wrap up. On the table, uh, expecting that the MPP would act in the interest of Ghana and not in the interest of, as in the MPP minority now, not in the interest of the party. What would you tell them, especially when there have been clear threats that they will not cooperate until the Supreme Court decides? Well, if you get a Speaker of Parliament acting unlawfully, breaching the Constitution, the right thing to do would be, in the interest of Ghana, is to get the Supreme Court, give a clear interpretation to us. So they for should us to have a way. Oh, yes, yeah, they should. And if they, uh, well, they don't even control government business. They are not misleading. The best they can do is to deal with private member bill. You don't control government business. Is a president who controls government business. Does so I don't even know why parliament. we are dealing. Does he, so you don't control does it. He, and if for some reason you do a private member bill, he, the president believes this is not in the interest no, of Ghana. He especially to the responsibility fact that to the you are acting court. unlawful. The president will not sign it. The parliament do not act the alone. Court. The president, that's why there are safeguards. The rule, the Check rule, and balances. The rule he's trying to speak about is rather generalia specialibus rule, not what you are saying. And if, you, if, you, if, if, if I'm not saying that I'm not ahead of this. I'm we'll saying that the rule is rather, <laughs> you are wrong. The rule is rather generalia specialibus rule. And oh, yeah. this provision oh, yeah. here, the article 110, <laughs> is special to parliament. We'll have to so don't be talking about that. That's a short form of what, what you've just now, said. What I've just said is a short form of what you've said. Go and check. Let me, let me say What you've just said is a short form of what I've just said. Let me say this. Ibrahim Ishak. Let me say this. It is incumbent upon the MPP to ensure that Parliament continues to work. The stance they are taking, even though the new majority can proceed with work without them, but they should also remember that it was this same Speaker of Parliament who ruled and made them majority. You remember in the early, in the early years, in the early days of the Parliament, there was the issue of who is majority in Parliament. Because we had um, 137, said, 137, yes. Uh, majority and, group and minority and Exactly. Group. He coined a term, majority caucus or majority group. It is the same um, uh, uh, speaker who gave them that ruling. So if today the ruling has gone against them, it is wrong upon for them to begin to say that they will not come to Parliament because of this ruling. We'll have to end it here. Thank you very much. And you just watched the Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim Amaliba. He is a director of conflict resolution for the opposition NDC, now majority in Parliament. Uh, you've also heard Andrew Apia Dankwa. He is private legal practitioner, communications team member of the Movement for Change. We've had with us as well uh, Kwame Jantua. He is a lawyer and member of the Convention People's Party. And just right on my immediate right, Ishak Ibrahim, lecturer, UPSA, and also a member of the communications... A, <laughs> <laughs> a member of the MPP's <laughs> communications team. Thank you so much for joining us on The Big Issue on your day on TV3. My name is Beatrice Edu. The program continues. Stay with us. Next